vegetable farming is on the move. And it's headed for the city. To save money and eat healthier, many city dwellers are finding their green thumbs. At a church in Hamilton, Ontario, a group of people are getting their hands dirty by growing their own vegetables and giving them away. Bill Wilcox is garden director of West Highland Baptist Church. My wife and I took uh, a missions perspectives course. At the end of the program, uh, we had an assignment to describe a missions project that we would be uh, interested in undertaking. Uh, therein came my uh, uh, interest because while I'm not the typical missionary, uh, I do very much enjoy gardening and I saw a, a need locally for uh, fresh produce. Wilcox didn't know exactly how he could use gardening to make a difference, but not long after that, West Highland decided to expand and announced that they'd purchased four more acres of land just behind the church. Uh, it was four acres of land that was not going to be used for probably five to ten years. Um, so I brought the uh, project idea to the board and uh, they uh, basically approved the uh, project and then went from, uh, we went from there in terms of uh, starting the garden three years ago. It's called a Victory Garden, and in it, volunteers from West Highland grow a variety of fresh vegetables and donate them to local food banks and soup kitchens. What specifically do you grow in uh, this garden? Very, various types of lettuce, radishes, peppers, corn, potatoes, beans, tomatoes, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, various types of onions, garlic, a turnip, parsnips. <laughs> it's all over the place. Okay. Yeah. Maintaining the garden requires both time and dedication during the summer months, a time when most people go on vacation. So why does he do it? Here's something physical we can uh, do, uh, something concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see it evolve and we can see uh, the benefits uh, directly with uh, you know, the uh, recipients. That line of thinking isn't a new one. During the First and Second World Wars, victory gardens were common. Governments in Canada, the US, the UK, Australia, and Germany encouraged people to plant their own gardens to reduce pressure on the public food supply. It's estimated that during wartime, 50 million American families had victory gardens. And with the economy and the environment on everyone's mind, Wilcox says gardens are making a comeback. Well, Hamilton, uh happens to be one of the largest demanders for food bank contributions. Well, for instance, uh, this year over last, uh, the demand at the food centers is about 26% higher than it was the same time last year. Mm. You look at the focus uh, that's been lately with uh, regard to eating locally, mm. eating organically, mm -hmm. um, providing for uh, you know the needs of the food bank, soup kitchens, the uh, quote unquote widows and orphans. Uh, the, the, those situations are never going to go away. And the church recognizes that. That's why West Highland also rents plots of land to church and community members. The plots are ideal for condo dwellers and new immigrants. We have uh, garden plots that are uh, basically for rent. We uh, charge $25 a year. Uh, the folks uh, get a, a plot of ground about uh, 15 foot square. It's uh, pre-plowed. It has been fertilized with mushroom compost. There's a water source over there. We provide some tools that they're welcome to use. This year we have 32 uh, plot holders over there that are uh, growing their own produce and are pulling. Recently, the they've also started a new program offering produce from the garden to their own members. John Mahaffey is senior pastor. We do have a number of families in the church who've come on hard times recently, and so we want to be of assistance to them. We have quite a few single moms who come to our church, mm -hmm. and of course they find it very hard to make ends meet. And so just this year we've started delivering uh, produce to them, and we hope to be able to deliver it to them at least once every two to three days. And through the garden, Mahaffey says the church is playing the role it was meant to play in the community, one every church should play. As believers in Jesus, we have to express our faith by reaching out to the widows, homeless, orphans. These are people who can't care for their own basic needs. Mm. And so this is a way of showing the love of Christ and reaching out to them. That's what we're here for as a, lo a local church. Last year, the church gave away 14,000 pounds of food, says Wilcox. This year, they're aiming for 20,000. Deliveries must be made several times a week to keep up with demand and harvesting. We're coming into a time when it'll be almost daily. 
Uh, by Labor Day weekend, uh, I would estimate we'll be delivering uh, oh, six, eight hundred pounds. Uh, for instance, tomatoes are very, very heavy at that point. Uh, you know, it requires uh, you know daily delivery, uh, daily harvesting. And what begins in the garden ends up here. The Good Shepherd Centre in Hamilton, Ontario is only one of the places produce from West Highland ends up. Here, needy people from all over the city enjoy locally grown fresh produce. Good Shepherd is one of Hamilton's largest social service providers. Christina Ferguson is manager of the food bank and clothing centres. In the food line, we see approximately about 350, 300 to 350 people a day, mm -hmm. six days a week. So if you add that up, that's quite a bit of uh, food and vegetables that will go through this building in any given day. Good Shepherd doesn't waste time. As soon as the vegetables come in, they go right back out, says Ferguson. The vegetables will go to one of two places, and most likely to both places. Uh, we will then turn around and use the fresh vegetables right away in our food line, um, which it happens every day at 3.30, because we want to be able to give as much fresh vegetables as we can to those that would never on the street ever experience a fresh vegetable. While many of us take going to the grocery store for granted, for many of Good Shepherd's clients, walking into a grocery store is a luxury, she says. The people that are using our food lines generally have no place to stay. Mm -hmm. They're probably staying in a shelter somewhere in the city, mm -hmm. or they just can't afford to buy groceries at all. For them, they rely on other sources bringing in the vegetables, and so we are truly thankful to West Highland for taking the time to grow that huge garden and then bringing the stuff down here so that we can turn around and offer fresh to these families that may never see fresh. The city of Hamilton has an estimated population of 504,000. 18% live below the poverty line. And according to Ferguson, that number is rising. Basically, we serve people that are Ontario Works, um, Ontario Disability, Workman's Compensation, people uh, that have generally very low incomes. What we're finding now is, due to economic times, we are now servicing people that have been laid off from their jobs, that weren't expecting it, that are on EI and are now running out of EI. So we're getting people that are coming in that have never in their life thought they were going to use social services. While vegetable donations go up during the summer thanks to places like West Highland, she says there's a void at many soup kitchens and food banks across the city during the summer. And it's because people are off on summer vacation and they forget that the need is still high. And in the summertime the need is even higher because now you have the children home from school and they're looking for a snack all day, every hour they want something to eat. And so we find that we're needing to give a lot more food. So I would encourage all of you that even though you're off on your summer vacation, you know your own kids at home are hungry. According to Ferguson, while there are lots of veggies in the summer, there aren't many during the rest of the year. And that's because unlike Good Shepherd, most food banks can't store them. I have to tell you that when the fresh vegetables come in, you know, when we offer them beans, they'll say canned beans, and we say, no, actually we have fresh beans. Fresh beans? Well, we've never had fresh beans. You know what? Everybody wants to be able to give their families the very best and the most nutrition that they can. So for us, it's absolutely wonderful to see the smiles on their faces and to be very happy that they can have something fresh to take home to their family. And, and we're, we're thankful for that. Back in the garden, Bill Wilcox says he'd like to see more churches jump on board and start their own community gardens. The big, biggest thing from my point of view is trying to encourage other people to adopt this uh, uh, kind of uh, gardening. Yeah, it might be a situation where people join forces. Uh, I'd like to see this though happening, you know, uh, across the country for that matter, uh, because there's probably not a city in uh, Canada that doesn't have a, a need for fresh produce at the, uh, the food bank level. And while it may not be happening in churches all across Canada just yet, at West Highland Baptist at least, the Hamilton Community Garden will continue to make a difference, one vegetable at a time. In Hamilton, Ontario, I'm Bridget Entry for 100 Huntley Street.